Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Long Beach State Dynasty. We continue season number two, and in this matchup, we go up against our rivals, the 5-1 Appalachian State Mountaineers. This team is loaded from top to bottom, and to be honest, this is probably going to be one of our toughest games this season they have run through everybody they've played so far and their only loss comes to florida by three in the opener now this team is filled up with you guys as recruits the two teams that will be used as custom recruits is appalachian state and charlotte so let me know if you guys see yourself on that roster congratulations if you have and here we go another rivalry game another year in the first matchup we defeated appalachian state actually so we are one and oh against them in this series and the two players of the week here they are lexington joseph is actually the backup running back for fiu and he won player of the week this week now i do that every single week give the player of the week a little boost there for his accolade and now we go up against appalachian state led by redshirt freshman eric Taylor. This is going to be interesting because Eric Taylor is going to be growing with JPE. They're both redshirt freshmen. He's rated higher than JPE, but this could be a rivalry with Charlotte the next four years. JPE versus Eric Taylor. Now, looking at their defense, they have a pretty good pass rush. Lane Jumper leads them in sacks. And coming into this game, I will actually give Kung Yashu the start over Riv Johnson. It seems like Riv Johnson, I feel like, should be a little bit better than what he is. And why not give the young fella a chance here, Kung Yashu, over the senior? We'll see what he does here in this action. I need a new spark to this offense. Let's get this game underway as Appalachian State does receive the opening kickoff. And Lamar Lewis will down that one. And here he comes out onto the field. 22 carries, 154 yards, and three touchdowns last game. You know they're going to run the ball heavy with him. So first and 10 this time, they run the receiver in motion. Here's a delayed hand up this time, Lamar Lewis, and he gets stopped by Octavius Oakley, but it's a gain of six. He leads the uh, conference in rush yards and touchdowns, 761 and nine touchdowns, almost double digit. So Taylor throws him on third and four, and he's got Alexander down the sideline, breaking a couple of tackles and getting pushed out of bounds at the 22-yard line. And that was an excellent throw by Taylor standing in the pocket. He had a clean pocket on that one. Now at first and 10 inside the red zone. Here comes Taylor throwing to left side. He's got Tramar Lavender again. Gain of 14. He plays in the slot, and he is one of Eric Taylor's favorite targets on this team. So second and goal, Lamar Lewis handoff, and that is a good stop. And it looks like Chase Rollins was there for the stop. So now they come out with five wide here, third and goal. Taylor moves in the pocket and throws on the run in the pass rush. Got right to him, and he gets rid of it incomplete. And they will settle for three on their first drive. But look who's coming out at quarterback. It's JPE who gets his first career start. He runs Kangashu in motion. It's a flea flicker, flicker. Here's a throw down the right side, and it is caught. Kangashu for 30 yards. First down. How about this way to open up his career as a starting quarterback? A flea flicker, and it works. And JPE shows off the trickery right away. So first and 10 this time, here's a handoff. This is Benjamin Duke, and he goes for about a gain of five. They're across the 50 now, his first carry of the game. So second and five, Appalachian State sends the pressure. He avoids one tackler, and he throws it into coverage. It's picked off. An exciting play, then a disastrous play. They sent the perfect pressure, and one guy went unblocked, almost tripped him up in the backfield, but it ends up being a turnover. So 3-0 here, Appalachian State's offense back onto the field. Here is Lamar Lewis with a tough running, and he picks up a gain of six, moving the chains on that one. So handoff once again. Here is Lewis, and he falls forward this time, and he picks up maybe a gain of eight yards. So Taylor under center once again now, second and two. 
This time, he's going to throw it to left side. It's picked off. It's Octavius Oakley. He's going to take it back and pushed out of bounds at the 38-yard line. We steal the ball right back, and I don't think Eric Taylor saw Octavius Oakley at all. He was scanning the field, and it looked like he threw at the last second and just a tad bit too late. So JPE back out onto the field. The play action fake, and it's going to be a sack. And GOS Gaming gets in for the sack. Look at this. He just goes straight past our right tackle on that one and gets to the quarterback. And now it's second and 19. Here is Pierre Chefu. He's going to roll to the left side. He's got space. He's going to take it himself, and he picks up a couple of blocks. Oh, and he steps out of bounds. He needed one more block, and he probably would have broke that one for a touchdown, but it's a gain of 27. And that is the dynamic weapon that JPE brings to the table. He can run the ball extremely well. So here's Terrence Pitt Howard. He gets his first handoff, and that goes for a gain of nine. And now we get it to about the 10-yard line here for a second and one. JPE, a little shovel pass, and he completes it to Christopher Dalton. And it's a first down, gain of two yards. So now first and goal. JPE throws to the right side. It's a screen pass call. Then Kong Yashu falls, and he gets to about the one-yard line. And you can just see the chemistry with these two. They spent all last year working out during the season when both of them weren't getting much playing time in practice. So now it's a third and goal. This is going to be a fake jet sweep, and we give it to Benjamin Duke. And that loses a couple of yards. John Eriks on the tackle. Questionable play call right there. I'm surprised he didn't throw. So tie ball game here is Eric Taylor back onto the field, breaking a tackle and steps out of bounds. Wow, he could have been gone on that one. But luckily, Kevin Scott pushes him out of bounds close to the 50. So first and 10 as his first quarter is winding down. Here's a handoff. Lamar Lewis breaks a tackle, and he's off to the right. It's to the left side. Max Liebham can't bring him down, and eventually gets brought down by Gary Anderson, who chases him from behind. But Lee Elmer had a chance to take him down in the backfield. So here, first and 10 this time. Eric Taylor scrambles up the middle, breaks a tackle, and he does pick up a gain of 11. We're going to have to throw that spy out there sometimes. I don't want to do it every play because then he might sit in the pocket and pick us apart. So here's Alexander with a catch on the left side. Touchdown. Beating Kevin Knox on the out route, and there was a lot of separation on that route. He gets in. It's 10-3. to three. So now we come out here to start the second quarter, and let's see what we do on the last play of the first. Here's a handoff, and that is TPH, and he picks up. About a gain of eight yards. So now second and two this time. Play action. Fake in the pressure. Gets to JPE. He goes down. And that's Tyrell Colon on that one. And now third and 12. Play action fake again. Appalachian State sends the pressure. But here's JPE escaping the pocket. And he dies for the first down. 15 yards first down for JPE. That's where he hurt you. They sent the pressure, and he does it all with his legs. So here's a throw across the middle this time on a third and four, and that's Riv Johnson, who can't hold on to it. He lost his spot, but then drops that one. You got to take advantage of the opportunities. So first and 10 now. Here's Taylor under center. He gets rid of it and almost got nailed in the pocket. And it's a gain of eight yards. So second and two this time. Here is Taylor. Delayed handoff. And it's Lamar Lewis who picks up just about a gain of one. So third and one now. Here he is under center again. We send the pressure. And he gets rid of it right away. Eric Taylor is only five of ten passing. Our secondary continues to show up. Our pass rush, we're going to have to send some blitzes to get to him, though. And he throws that one away. Here's Devon Cash now back to receive the punt return. And he picks up a gain of 18, setting us up with great field position. So first and 10 now. Here's JPE. He's going to try to scramble to the left side. And he does escape the pocket. And he does cut inside. Gain of 12. He gets to the 20. He's going to hurt you with his legs. They haven't sent a spy yet. So first and 10 now. Here he is scrambling to the right side. He throws on the run. He's got Christopher Dalton. Who runs over a defender for the touchdown. How about the escape ability from JPE? Gets rid of it on the run and an accurate throw while taking a hit. 
and Dalton gets in. It's 10 up. So now about two minutes left here in the first half. Here is Taylor. He's going to scramble to the right side, and he picks up about a gain of 10. And we do have to stop him with his legs as well. As here's a handoff. No, it's a speed option to left side. And here's Taylor keeping it. He does get hit, and it does go for a gain of eight. First down, and now they're across just about to the 50. First and 10, under two minutes left now. Taylor takes off again. No spy put on him this play. He takes a big hit from Kevin Knox, but it's a gain of 18. First down. So now across the 50 this time. This is Taylor, a quick throw to Lavender who has it, and he picks up a gain of 19 yards. They call their first timeout of the first half. So first and 10 now at about the 16-yard line. Under center, Taylor takes off. Nobody is going to stop him again. He slides down. Octavius Oakley was right there, and they call their second timeout. We have to put a spy out there. We do this play. Kevin Scott is our spy. Here's a handoff. Lamar Lewis, and he tries to get to the outside. That is Ralph Clark on the tackle. And that eventually brings it to a third and goal. Here is Taylor. He steps up, throws to the right side, and Tremar Lavender gets stopped. And that is a tackle at about the two by a gang of Charlotte 49ers. So about 33 seconds left. We have two timeouts. We call a timeout there at the end of the first half. Here's a throw to left side, and that is caught. Alex Patterson, the senior tight end, gets in, picking up a gain of 19. So first and 10 now after we hurried up to the line. Here's a quick throw to left side, and it's caught. McLot this time, gain of 13. So JPE goes over 100 yards passing with that throw. Is here we line it up at the line of scrimmage again, hurrying up to the offense. Throwing deep is Kanyashu open and he drops it. He had a touchdown more than a step. He was wide open and Kanyashu drops an easy touchdown. So JPE now on a second and 10. He's going to throw and he's got McLot. How about the accuracy from JPE in this game? Those were two throws right on the money. So 11 seconds left now. JPE throws to the right side, and he's got Micklot. It's a gain of 17. We call our second timeout of the first half. So seven seconds left here. We have enough for about one play, maybe two. Here is J JPE rolling, throwing. He's got Riv Johnson, who gets tackled at about the three. One second left. We call the timeout and settle for the field goal to tie this game up. We get ball at halftime, so we decided to play it safe there and not go for the touchdown. It's 13 up going into halftime. JPE is playing well. So we start the second half, and now let's see what we can do after a full half under his belt. Here's a play action fake. Here is Marcus Williams, the tight end, and he gets about a gain of 13. He's shaking up on that play as well. But nice throw by JPE. The one thing about this offense is the deception. There's so much deception in this offense as we throw on the left side. Here is McLott who has the catch. But it's actually going to be a legal man downfield. They call pass interference a legal man downfield on the offense. It was actually a designed screen. So now we move back to about the 29, third and 18. Throw it and it's picked off. This time it is going to be Lee who's back there in coverage. And wow, I don't know what happened on that play. Kung Yashu had a lot of feel to the boundary, and he did not take it that way. He got actually jammed at the line inside, and it caused a late and errant throw. So two interceptions for JPE in his starting debut. Here's a throw to the right side. That is Tramar Lavender. He starts out the next drive with a gain of 19. Eric Taylor completed pass on that one. So now they're inside the 10. Here's a counter play. Hand off, and Lewis gets brought down. Good tackle by Vincent Youngblood, the leader on the outside. And now it's a third and goal. They come out here with two tight ends to the left side, running Tramar La Actually, Alexander in motion. Here is Taylor. He steps up in the pocket and gets rid of it. Out of bounds. Interesting play call on that one. Nobody was open, and they settle for three points. 
Our defense is really, really playing well in this one. We've got them to settle for a few field goals now. Here's Riv Johnson back to receive the kickoff. He cuts to the outside. Nobody's home. Let's see if he can beat one man. He's got one more man to beat, and he beats him. It's a touchdown. Riv Johnson. That's how to respond to losing your starting receiver position, and he takes it back to the house. And wow, that is the dynamic playmaking I've been looking for from Rev Johnson. And he hasn't done it quite at receiver, but he's still an excellent returner. So now we're up by four here in the second half. And there's a nice play by our defense causing the throwaway. And now it's a second and long this time. It's going to be Lamar Lewis. And look at the gang of Charlotte 49ers around him. He's only got 60 yards rushing in this one. That's the conference's leading rusher. So third and seven, throw to the sideline, it's picked off. It's Ralph Clark. He was looking for Lavender again. And I don't know why he threw that pass. Clark is right there in coverage, and it ends up being another turnover for Eric Taylor. So here's a throw across the middle to start the next drive. Here is Terrence Pitt Howard out of the backfield, and he picks up maybe a gain of eight. So handoff now, third and four, and this is Terrence Pitt Howard. He picks up a gain of three. That's only his fourth carry of the game, and he remains in here now for a fourth and one. Running to Von Cash in motion, handoff. It's going to be TPH. He keeps it. He gets inside the five and falls down. Gain of 16 yards, and Terrence Pitt Howard showing the vision on that one, making it goal to go. So now here we are at the one. Here's a handoff, and it's TPH touchdown, one yard out. That one was easy, making it a 10-point game, 11 with the field goal. He walks in. It's now 27 to 16. So two and a half to go here in the second half. Here's a throw to left side, and it's caught by Tramar Lavender again. He picks up a gain of 11, this time beating Max Liebham in coverage. He's got six receptions so far. So here's Taylor under center this time. A delayed handoff. Lamar Lewis, and he gets stopped. And, man, has he been in check so far. 14 carries, 63 yards. He has not broken off a long one in a while. So here he's in the backfield protecting Eric Taylor, throwing the ball to the right side, and it's incomplete. I'm not sure if he threw that one away or he overthrew the receiver. It looked like maybe he threw it away, but the pressure was getting right to him. So here's JPE back out onto the field, running a little bit of an option this time, and he keeps it for a gain of seven yards as we move this game on to the fourth quarter. Here's JPE this time, throw to the right side, and it's going to be Joshua, who has it on the right side, makes a man miss, and it's a gain of 22. And he makes a couple of men miss on the juke move and spins for a couple of more yards. And it's a gain of about 22 yards. It's a first down as we're across the 50 now. So JPE now, screen pass call. Here's a quick throw. It's Kung Yashu again. The chemistry is going to be good with these two guys, Kung Yashu and JPE. Like I said, they had all last year practice in practice together. And they just spent all practice long throwing to each other. And it shows here in Kung Yashu's debut as a starter on the outside as well. So now a fake jet sweep, second and nine, throw in, and it's a wide open Devon Cash inside the five and tackled at about the one. Cash has his second catch of the game. This one goes for 26 yards, and JPE is only has six incompletions. What a game. So first and goal, running a man in motion. That's Kung Yashu. JPE, he keeps it. Touchdown. He's had a rushing touchdown in every single game so far this year, and it doesn't stop now. It goes all the way into the fourth quarter. He was actually supposed to give this one, but still gets past the linebacker, and it's now 34-16. to 16. Who predicted this outcome? Here is Eric Taylor scrambling to the right side, and he picks up a gain of 27 to start off the next drive, and it's a first down. He's over 100 yards rushing as well. So now they get it across the 50. We send the nickel blitz, and he gets it quickly away to Tramar Lavender. It's a gain of 13, moving the chains again. It looks like Liebham got hurt. He's going to be out for two quarters. Here's a quick throw, and it's A.J. Green inside the five, and his first catch of the game goes for 10 yards. 
Octavius Oakley on the tackle. That is his 10th tackle of the game. Here is Taylor this time scrambling to the right side, and he falls in. It's a touchdown, and Appalachian State brings it to within 12. They're probably going to go for two here to make it a 10-point game. So here is Taylor. He comes out empty and under center. Here he throws the left side, and he's got Joe McKinnon for three yards and a two-point conversion, and now they're going to line up for the onside kick. So the hands team out onto the field. It bounces and recover. It's Kung Yashu. He's got space, too, and he breaks the tackle and gets to about the 26. That would have been amazing if he broke it for a touchdown, but he recovered it. And you can just see we've scored on four of the last five drives. So 34-24. We're just going to try to run out this clock. Here's a handoff, and it's Terrence Pitt Howard, and he picks up a gain of 15. But they're going to call holding on this play. So it's going to come back. So now second and 18. We try to catch them off guard this time. They're going to send the blitz. Here's JPE scrambling. And he's going to take it himself and stay in bounds. And he picks up a block downfield by Yashu. And it's a gain of eight, forcing Appalachian State to call a timeout. So third and 10 this time. A little shovel pass called. And we get it to about maybe one yard or so. But we're still in field goal range. We knock down the field goal. So 37 to 24 now. They do have to get into the end zone twice. Here's the first pass out to left side, and it's dropped. Tremar Lavender, but a good play that time and knocked out of his hands. And now it's going to bring it to a third and 10. Here is Eric Taylor from the shotgun. Four wide receivers out there. He's getting pressured. He throws, and it's picked off. It's Octavius Oakley again. Three interceptions by Eric Taylor. And that one seals this game up. Octavius Oakley, 10 tackles, two interceptions in this game. And JPE gets the game ball in this one for his first ever victory as a starter. He turned the ball over twice, but a couple of those throws were just good plays. And we end up with the victory I said JPE got the game ball. I'm going to give it to Octavius Oakley, though, for the two interceptions he had in this game. JPE ran for 60 yards. His touchdown streak continues on the ground, and he also carried Terrence Pitt Howard to 54 yards as well off of 10 carries. Mick Lott had four for 54. Kung Yashu was impressive on the outside. I really love what I saw from him. Right now, I like him on the outside going forward. Riv Johnson only had one catch for four yards, and he had that big-time opportunity to have a big play over the middle but then dropped it, and that's what I'm talking about. you got to take advantage of your opportunities, and Kung Yashu did that in this game. For Appalachian State, GOS Gaming had two sacks. Lane Jumper had one, and Colin also had one, and then Eric Taylor had a really bad game throwing the football, to be honest with you. He ran the ball well, though, 9 for 114. But the conference's leading rusher only had 66 yards rushing. Jamar Lavender led them with 9 for 91. And they dropped their first conference game and dropped a 5 and 2 overall. So now they are in second place in their side of the division. They're going to need to get some wins and get back on top. But on our side, look at Marshall. Remember last year, they finished at the bottom of our conference, and now Grant Wells is leading this team to an excellent record so far, 5-2. and two. They do have a bad loss their third week to Akron, but besides that, they have been playing very, very well, putting up points, and their defense is playing well also. And going into next week, we have a few recruits that have committed. Matthew Meager at punter, Dontro Jones, the reliable receiver, Seth Clark, and William Latimer, the cornerback and tight end. But next week will be a matchup versus our former quarterback in Billy Ray. We saw what he could do a couple of episodes ago where he threw a NCAA uh, high that week. Uh, he scored seven touchdowns. And now here we are, Billy Ray versus his former team, East Carolina versus Charlotte. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.